Hello again and welcome to our latest video here on the YouTubes. My name is Jay Tate. I am publisher at AuburnSports.com. Today we'll be talking about the Georgia Bulldogs who are traveling to Jordan-Hare Stadium this weekend to take on the Auburn Tigers, a game that will be televised on CBS kicking off at approximately 2.30 in the afternoon Central Time. So, in that spirit, let's take a look at Georgia's schedule thus far this season. Uh, not a lot of challenges, particularly on the road. At Vanderbilt to open, hmm, Vanderbilt's not very good. At Tennessee, hmm, Tennessee's not very good. They did play Florida in Jacksonville, which to me is a road game. People would kvetch and fight about that. But you're in Florida, and you're not at home. Uh, it's a game that they won. And Florida did some interesting things in that game. They were successful against Georgia in some some interesting ways. But Jake Fromm came through, and uh, they won that game. It was a big game for them. And their most recent game, they lost, They beat Missouri, beat the breaks off Missouri last week. They didn't have Kelly Bryant, so Missouri kind of sucked. But, you know, whatever. It's not a particularly tough schedule. Uh, there's not a lot of gnarly situations going on there. But their big, big game against Florida, they won it. And so, yeah, that's to their credit. Florida's pretty good, as Auburn can tell you. Just saying. All right, let's take a look at Georgia's top-rated PFF players. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, Andrew Thomas leads the way with a 92.8 grade. A guy who, seriously, I can't find a single problem with this kid. Um, he's going to be a top 10 pick for sure in the draft coming up. Could be top five. Um, tall, long, good pass pro guy, good run guy. Uh, doesn't seem to have one ounce of fat on him. Like, he just has good weight. Man, he's really, really good. Um, I don't really know what else to say except that that guy's a stud and he's probably the best offensive lineman in the country. So take that into consideration. Jake Fromm, their second rated player from a PFF perspective, 89.1, a player who in some ways is underappreciated and in some ways is kind of overrated. It's hard to think that there's somebody that could be both, but I think he is. It depends on what you value. Jake Fromm is a good short throw guy. He's not somebody who can beat people deep or wants to beat people deep. That's not really how he rolls, and that's not what they ask him to do. He throws the short stuff generally underneath, and he's good at it. And when you do that and you don't turn the ball over very much, say for the South Carolina game, uh, that's when you get a grade like that. Uh, Lawrence Cager, their number one wide receiver, uh, also a stud, also very, very good. Uh, gives you some real punch in the receiving game. Can take it to the house. Very good receiver of the ball, doesn't drop a lot of stuff, and he's where he needs to be when he should be there. Um, to me, just, you know, grade A, exactly what you're looking for, number one wide receiver uh, at this level. A guy who is a little bit banged up, though. He got knocked out of the Missouri game with a shoulder problem that came up earlier in the season uh, against South Carolina, so that's something to keep an eye on, but he has been practicing. Uh, DeAndre Swift, their A number one tailback. They have a lot of depth there. They always do. Uh, but Swift's been awesome this year, 80.9 uh, grade. A good runner of the football, particularly up the middle. You think of him being really fast. Maybe that's because his name is Swift. He can do damage on the outside too, but he's really good inside just as well. Um, he reminds me of a bigger uh, Edwards Hilaire from the LSU, uh, a multi-purpose back. Uh, DeAndre Swift can catch the ball and do things with it too. So, I mean, if you're a defensive coordinator, that's the kind of guy that gives you nightmares. And then George Pickens. I know for Auburn folks watching this, the less we say about George Pickens, the better. Uh, a guy who was committed to Auburn, there's a lot of talk going into National Signing Day that he and Bo Nix are going to be this collaboration team that would work together forever. And then George Pickens went to Georgia. So uh, he's been good over there. He's not been great. He's still very, very young. He's probably going to be an awesome player. He's been reliable. From what I have seen, and I don't watch every minute of Georgia football, but to me, he's at his best making crazy catches like the body shaping and the concentration on the really tough catches has been outstanding. He just has been a guy that's dropped a few and he's hasn't been a guy, at least to this point who just burns you deep and takes it to the house all the time. He's just been, you know, solid good. And that's what an 80.4 is. I reckon in this kind of context, take a look at Georgia's top rated players from a defensive perspective. This is again from PFF pro football focus, J.R. Reed, their transfer from Tulsa, has been a rock, an anchor in the back end of that defense, and 84.8, which is a really nice rating. Anything above 80, uh, 80 is good, and once you get to 85, you're talking about all-conference, all-American type players. 
Um, Eric Stokes is their top cornerback. 83.9 seems a little high to me. When I've seen him play, obviously he's lightning fast, and he is a great athlete and somebody you don't want to get matched up with in a race. But I don't know if he has the same kind of smoothness, is that a word, uh, that you see from like what I would call a natural-born cornerback. He doesn't strike me as that. The way that Carlton Davis was at Auburn uh, a couple years ago, uh, DeAndre Baker from Georgia, just a made-to-order corner. You're not necessarily worried about how fast he is. You're just talking about how good he is at covering people. And I don't know if Eric Stokes is quite there, but the PFF rating obviously is there. Uh, Malik Herring, uh, defensive end, 81.7, a tremendous player, um, not a full-time starter. He's a guy who gets anywhere from, let's say, 15 to 35 snaps a game, and obviously he's very effective. This is going to be a recurring theme we're going to be talking about uh, during this video, but again, a part-time starter who uh, wrecks shop when he's in there. Uh, Devontae Wyatt, who also plays inside. Well, Herring is more of an end. I think of Wyatt as being more of a tough guy. Um, 77.5 again not a full-time starter I probably think of him as a second team guy for them and uh we're gonna be this we're this is gonna be coming up a lot because Georgia's run defense is absolutely filthy and guys like this is a reason why uh, Michael Barnett another guy kind of a tough guy plays tackle um helps kind of muck up those inside rushing lanes which is something Georgia's really good at and Barnett is a big reason why so is Tyler Clark but Barnett is a guy as well. Sometimes these ratings confuse me a little bit. Not to say these guys aren't good. They are. They're tremendous. But at least the bottom three there, they're not full-time starters. They just kind of come in and play, you know, whatever, 15 to 40 snaps maybe. You know, Barnett didn't play very many snaps in the last game against Missouri, but uh, he's been a good player, no doubt. All right, let's take a look at a few things uh, from Pro Football Focus and the scouting report suggest about Georgia's weaknesses. Uh, Lawrence Cager, again, knocked out of the Missouri game. He's had shoulder problems in the past, so there's a concern that he might not be 100%. He has been practicing. Uh, Kirby Smart did say that and said he'd been cleared and all that. And it seems like anecdotal evidence suggests that Cager's going to be fine for this game, but they really need him. And I mention that when I say Cager's status slash wideout punch, he is definitely their bell cow when it comes to the receiving game. So, if he's not 100%, let's say he's 80%, and he takes another knock on that shoulder, I mean, it's just not a situation that you would probably want to be in um, because I don't know if the next guy's through, starting with Pickens and working their way on down to Blaylock and whoever else, I don't know if they can win you the game. Maybe they can, maybe they can't. Taking a look at their cornerbacks, obviously you, you guys saw on the first slide, Eric Stokes had a very good year, a very fast dude. Don't know how... Great he is at cornerback, but he's been good. I mean, I, I guess I don't really have much bad to say about him. The problem is that on the other side. So you got Tyson Campbell plays there. In a perfect world, he's 100%. He's not banged up. He's a good cornerback. Problem is he is banged up. It seems like he doesn't play all that much because he's got nicks and bruises a lot, and he's in that situation right now. So I don't know how available he's going to be for this Auburn game. If he's in there, is he going to be able to stay in there? How effective will he be? that kind of a thing. And the problem with Georgia is if he's not able to go, I think it's kind of a step down to the other guys, Webb and DJ Daniel, because I just don't think of them as being particularly ready to go right now. Um, and J.R. Reed and LeCount can do some things back there, but as far as coverage goes on the outside, Georgia's just looks okay to me. Um, and that's going to be an area that Auburn's going to want to exploit if indeed Tyson Campbell's not quite where he should be and they're having to play backups over there. I just I feel like that's kind of a weakness for Georgia. But again, those guys are not bad. I just don't think they're a strength. Can Fromm carry his team? We mentioned earlier he's got a very high grade. Um, a guy who is really good inside of 20 yards. He likes middle of the field. And in that area, he is, I don't know as though there's anybody in the country better than him statistically at throwing the ball uh, in those squares. You know, if you break it up into – zero yards to 10 yards to 20 yards. You're talking about middle of the field, line of scrimmage to 20 yards out, he's as good as it gets. Um, I think I, I wrote up something earlier that in that range, he's 90 of 109 this year. That's like 83, 84%. So, yeah, he's really good at that. My question is, can he carry his team? So in the situations, there's only been two this year. 
when they play a team that's good enough or ready to stop their run game, then the pressure, mental pressure, is on Jake Fromm to carry the team. He's been in that situation twice. He was in that situation against South Carolina, which is not a particularly great defensive team, but they sold out to stop the run, and they didn't really stop it, but they slowed it down enough to where Fromm had to get more involved than he normally would be, and he was bad. He was picked three times by the same guy, and he also lost a fumble. So those turnovers spelled doom for Georgia. They end up losing that game to a Will Muschamp and the Gamecocks at home, and Fromm did not handle that well. Now, against Florida, Florida had a better, as you guys know, as a, a better defensive front. They also essentially stopped Georgia's run game. It was They were more effective against it than South Carolina was. Put a lot of pressure, mental pressure, on Jake Fromm to carry his team, and he came through big time in that game. I want to say he was 20 of 30 for like 285, two touchdowns, no picks, no fumble lost. And they beat Florida in Jacksonville. Big game, huge game at the time. I don't know if Florida's quite as good as maybe we thought they were, but a huge win anyway, and Jake Fromm was there. So in the situations where Georgia really needed Jake Fromm, he's one and one. So I don't know if he's going to be able to, if Auburn is able to stunt and slow down Georgia's run game, I don't know if Jake Fromm is going to be able to carry them or not. He has sometimes, and he's failed sometimes. We don't know. Trey Hill, he is their starting center. He took a knock on the ankle in the Missouri game and was hobbled and was out of that game. And he is back at practice, at least that's what Kirby was saying, that he's been cleared and he's probably going to play. I have no doubt that that kid's going to get on the field and play this game. It's a really big game for them. But here's the thing. He's going to have Derek Brown across from him. Derek Brown is basically every center's nightmare. He's a guy you really don't want to mess with. And you really don't want to mess with him if you're not close to 100%. I don't know what percent Trey Hill's ankle is going to be. Is it 80%? Is it 60%? I don't know. But if it's not 100, that makes him a prime target for Derek Brown to embarrass him. And that's nothing against Trey Hill. That's just to say that Derek Brown's the best thing about Armour's defense, and he's going to be given a center hell regardless of who it is or what condition his ankle's in. If Trey Hill is not in the form to resist Derek Brown the way he normally would be, that changes things for Georgia's run game because they like running inside. Now, DeAndre Swift can absolutely burn you on the outside, but that's the thing about him. He likes it inside, too, and he'll go strong, and he, he's fearless. And they have some guys behind him that will run up the middle, too. But Derek Brown is a guy that can slow down that middle surge, and if Trey Hill's not 100%, that could be a problem for them. And I do want to mention that you know the, the closest thing to Auburn's defensive front in the SEC is Florida. Florida may be, as a group, better than Auburn up front. I, I don't know. It's close. Both are really, really good. Georgia had trouble running against Florida. And, and there wasn't really a schematic victory for Florida. It was just they were really good up there. And I think, I think Auburn's really good up there, and I think they can have the same effect on Georgia's run game. And then special teams lackluster. They're not bad, Georgia's special teams. They just don't really do a lot. Now, their kickoff return, I think they're last in the league in that. And then their kickoff coverage, their punt coverage, and their punting are just – they're like league average or maybe a little bit below – Again, not a big deal if you're a coach, but they're just not – that's generally not a way they're going to beat you, and it's generally not a way that you can beat them. It's just kind of mis- – it's like a push. Taking a look at the things that Georgia does well from a PFF perspective, defense, defense, defense. These, this group is so good against the run, I, it's just hard to believe. They haven't given up a rushing touchdown this year. They're averaging, I think, 75 rush yards per game conceded. And the way they do that is they have really good run into gap integrity up front. Guys like Tyler Clark, Malik Herring, um, Devontae we were talking about earlier. They just hold their gaps. And then guys like Monty Rice and Crowder just come up, come over that and clean it up. It's the same formula Auburn uses, except Georgia's guys are really good at it too. My argument would be they've played a lower caliber opponent than Auburn has so far to this season. I mean, when you're feasting on Kentucky and Tennessee and Vanderbilt and Missouri's offense was in really bad shape when Georgia faced them, maybe Auburn would put up the same numbers. That's not to discredit Georgia at all. The run defense is absolutely filthy. And it's going to be hard for Auburn to run against them. It just is. As I mentioned just now, run defense is filthy. They're just really good up front. 
And it's more than just being really good at like two or three positions. They're good all the way around. And their second team guys are filthy too. I don't think they have a Derek Brown, that, that, you know, superstar number one guy who just raises hell and causes all kinds of trouble in various ways. But they got a lot of dudes who do their job and do it well. And they're there and they answer the call every time. Uh, defensive depth up front. It's amazing to me how good Georgia's second team defense is. And you think, who cares, JG? I don't, I'm not facing the second team. Yeah, actually, you are a lot of times. A really good defense like that can rotate dudes and not have a big step down. I think that Georgia's got seven or eight guys that would start at most other SEC schools on their second team. You talk about Wyatt. I mean, he's, a, he's one of their top-rated players. He's kind of a backup. Nolan Smith's been awesome at linebacker this year. Herring to Kobe Dean. Lewis Seen, who plays safety behind the count. And J.R. Reed, he's been awesome when he's played this year. Jordan Davis has been good. I mean, all of those guys would be starters pretty much everywhere else. And at Georgia, their second team. They just have a lot of dudes. And that also tells you that the stuff that Georgia's doing right now on defense, which is impressive as hell, they're going to keep doing it because they've got dudes coming up through the ranks who are going to be really good too. Uh, DeAndre Swift, you saw, I think he was their, what, third-rated player, fourth-rated player. Uh, he is a J.G. Tate All-American. I love DeAndre Swift. I think he's tremendous. Uh, if I was a football coach, and I am absolutely not, but if I was, DeAndre Swift is like the exact dude I would get. He can do everything and um, very rarely hurts you. He just helps you. That's what you want. And I think he's going to be a problem for Auburn. When I say here, Fromm sticks to the knitting, what I mean by that, that's something my grandma used to say is she, I used to tell her, ask her about things. She'd say, I just stick to the knitting, which means I stay in my lane. I do what I'm supposed to do. That's what Jake Fromm does. Again, I mentioned earlier, he's really good inside of 20 yards, particularly middle of the field, but he can throw outside too. And that's what he does. And if he sees a risky pass that's maybe 35 yards out that Brett Favre might try, that Baker Mayfield might try, he doesn't do that. Because he just doesn't want to, he doesn't want to risk the downside of that. Now, obviously, the South Carolina situation a little different there. I don't know what happened on that one. Sometimes guys have bad games, but in general, Fromm does not give the ball away. He's a very safe quarterback, and I like that about him. If I'm a coach, I like that about him too. He doesn't put my defense in bad situations, and he doesn't slow us down. He's a positive all the time. If you're an Auburn person watching this video, you kind of know what I'm talking about because Bo Nix does put the defense in bad situations, or he did earlier in the year with the picks, with the fumbles. He's been better about it lately. But Jake Fromm's, you know, two full years ahead of him. And he's learned a lot. I think that in a perfect world, Gus is probably using Bo about the way they use Jake Fromm right now. It's just that Jake Fromm is significantly better and more refined because he's older. He's faced a lot more competition, and he's been good. Our friend Ben Wolk, who used to work with us uh, here at AuburnSports.com, who is now working over in Georgia and is a Georgia graduate, he loves Jake Fromm, and he thinks he's criminally underappreciated. I don't know about that, but because a lot of people think a lot of Jake Fromm, but he's good at what he does. I just don't know if Auburn takes out that run game and says, beat us, Jake Fromm, I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. I suspect we're going to find out an answer to that question because I think Auburn's going to be able to stop uh, at least slow down Georgia's uh, run game attack. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up there. I know that we could talk a lot more about Georgia because they've been a fascinating team this year, and they're really good. Uh, but we're going to stop it there. I do want to say thank you for taking time to watch this video. If you liked it and you like the stuff we're doing here on the channel, definitely subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything, and it makes me and everybody else here at AuburnSports.com happy and rewarded. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Be sure to mash that bad boy. Also, if you have a question for me or a comment to make about the show, um, definitely make it. I will be answering it. I keep an eye on uh, those comments, and I'll definitely jump in and interact with you. I have no problem with that. I don't have any hate for the Georgia peoples. I hope you don't have any hates for me either. And my friends at UGASports.com, I love them. Roddy, Dash, Smallwood, eh, Meharry, Jake, they're, they're cool. I like those guys. So if you're a Georgia fan watching this and it's the only video you're going to see all year, you need to subscribe to UGASports.com. Those guys do a terrific job over there. Anyway, guys, if you're an Auburn-minded person, AuburnSports.com is the place to be. Thank you for watching. Until we see you again, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars.